Hey friends, Patrick here, and you can already see it on the screen today. Let's talk about webhooks, to be more exact, building webhooks in .NET, .NET 8. Because in the end, what you want to use for webhooks is a simple .NET Web API. We got this question in the .NET Web Academy, and as you can see here, this is the definition of a webhook on Wikipedia. Just Google for it, and then the first hit here, Wikipedia, and it says, in web development, a webhook is a method of augmenting or altering the behavior of a web page or web application with custom callbacks. So callbacks already an interesting term here. Then you see regarding the function, they are user-defined HTTP callbacks. And when you read a little bit further, then you see the source site makes an HTTP request to the URL configured for the webhook. Now, lots of fancy terms here, but in the end, what a webhook is, is simply an endpoint in your web API in .NET. So in the end, you have a web service, something happens in any kind of application, could be a website, a web application, a client application, whatever it is, some kind of event occurs there, and then you want to make a call to a, set, to a certain service, and this complete thing, then you can call a webhook, a webhook pattern if you want. Correct me if I'm wrong, write it down in the comments, all right? But now let's just try to implement that stuff because what I uh, really wanna emphasize here is, as it states here, authenticating the webhook notification. So you want to make this thing secure in the end, all right? Kinda secure, maybe. So we will have a look today and let's already jump into Visual Studio. I will save you time. I won't uh, implement every single line here because the example I want to show you here is a simple webhook about video game achievements. So you have an achievement in a video game and then you want to make a call after this achievement is unlocked. So for that, we've got this achievement notification model here, player name, achievement name, and the uh, date and time when this achievement was unlocked. And again, here we have a controller for that. As you can see, this is a simple .NET Web API in .NET 8. This is the project that I created. And as you can see here, this is a simple, uh, one simple endpoint, HTTP post, unlock achievement. And here we uh, provide the achievement notification for the payload. And then in the console, we simply write player so-and-so, unlocked achievement so-and-so on the specific date. So let's just run this real quick. And then we can already test this in Swagger. Again, this is really, really just .NET Web API basics. There it is. With Swagger, we can try this. We have our payload here. We execute it. Give me a sec. Here's the, uh, the console. All right. So now we execute this thing. And here we see the result player string unlocked string. So in essence, Swagger UI here already is kind of a client that then runs this callback here, but maybe we can do it a bit better. For that, I also created a client application here in the solution. So you can see again, the same model here. And in the program CS here, we are also just making an HTTP post request. So we have the uh, achievement notification, the object, right, we serialize that because this is a JSON payload that we will send with the post request down here in the end. Make sure that the URL is correct and then we get a result. This is great, but again, maybe you don't want to make it that public, not secured at all. So typically what you do in this webhook situation here, what you can do is adding an API key. And regarding the API key, let's type some code in there. So for instance, usually, of course, you would store this either in your app settings JSON or in uh, any kind of environment variables, however you deploy your application there. But let's just keep things simple. So we have a constant string API key it is, and we call this thing my top secret API key. Great, right? And now here, we also want to provi provide this key, of course, uh, with every request. And typically you would send this with the header of your request. So what you can do here is you say from header, we want something that is called with the following name. So from header it is, and then X 
API key. Now this in the end is a custom header, all right? It's not uh, like the uh, authentication header you know from when you're using JSON Web Tokens, for instance, and you wanna provide a JSON Web Token with a request, then you can use the authorized attribute in your web API. This is nothing like that. This is actually a custom header, meaning this x-api-key value here, you can decide yourself what you want to write there. This is just something that, well, developed over time, I guess. So this is now a convention to store an API key in the header of your request. So we will do that here as well. Let's use the same name for that header for the API key. All right, and now we just, well, we compare this stuff. So if the API key that is given is not the API key that we want, then we simply return unauthorized. There it is, and with the short sweet message, invalid API key. All right, something like that. And if we have the correct API key, then again, we write this stuff here into the console. That's that part, and now the other part here. So here now, you see it here, we have our HTTP client instance, and before we make the actual call, what we can do, of course, is we just say HTTP client, and then default request headers, and then add, and as you can see here now, you see here string name, string value, so adds the specified header and its value into the HTTP headers collection. So of course, we can add anything we want here, but in our case, that would be the x-api key. And here, this is my top secret API key. Maybe first a uh, wrong value here. So let me just restart the web API. And now for testing that with the client, we are already in the proper directory in the webhook client directory. So now I can just run .NET run. And then we should see Unauthorized, perfect. Fail to post achievement status code unauthorized. This is exactly what we expected, right? Because here in our, nope, not in there, here, we returned the unauthorized. Now, if you don't provide a key, an API key, then we should get, make a guess, let's just test that, bad request. All right, so this is the correct one. And again, when we have a look here, nothing there all right so this is the web api web, web api jesus and now proper key hopefully let's run this one more time and achievement successfully posted and here now we see ellie unlocked it can't be for nothing on june 14th 2013. all right so that's pretty much it already don't be intimidated by these fancy terms. What is a webhook? We want to implement a webhook. In the end, it's just a .NET Web API. Of course, I can already uh, feel the comments that maybe it's still a bit more than just a Web API endpoint. But in the end, this is how it starts. Make sure to secure it with an API key, but then you can, in the end, when you, for instance, uh, save the API key for every user in the database, right? and then you can make use of that stuff like, or use it like a webhook from your, I don't know, Maui applications, from your web applications, whatever you wanna use there. All right, so I hope you learned something today. If so, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much to all my patrons for supporting me and thank you very much for watching. I hope I see you next time. Take care.